Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome back to a, uh, another tutorial about Rigify. In this tutorial, I just want to do a quick update and uh, try to get in a little bit to stage two here because there's been a couple um, people that have asked about creating drivers for corrective shapes. So I want to cover that and um, there's been a also been a few um, questions on blenderartist.org recently about it. So I'm going to show you how I um, plan and create um, custom shapes, corrective shapes for um, uh, rigs and how to, uh, which bones to use and how to set up drivers. So it's actually pretty simple. And um, I'm going to use my FK controls to do this. And I'm just going to create one um, corrective shape for this tutorial. And actually, I already made it. I'm going to type RXX because I want to rotate my FK shin 90 degrees. So I'm going to use FK controls in order to plan this out. Um, and I, if I select my measure, I can go to my shape keys. And I've already made a corrective shape, knee x90.l. So if I turn this on, um, basically this is just going to help me get a little bit better deformation, sharpen up that knee a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to auto apply this so we don't have to uh, manually go in there and turn these on and off. So if I unrotate it there, I don't want to have to do this manually. RXX90. So, um, as I mentioned, I like to use FK controls for this, for our planning stage here, and also um, for making my uh, corrective shape um, too. So, all right. So the first thing we need to do is determine which bone is going to drive that corrective shape. Now, even though I'm using the FK to pose this at 90 degrees, I actually do not want to use this as my target for um, the driver on this shape key that we're going to create here. And the reason for that is if I did use the FK, um, our corrective shape key for the knee would not work when we were using IK. So let me select one of these and turn on IK and go to that one here. Let me just turn on my IK controls. So I rotate this up, grab it. So I can actually just snap IK to FK. So basically if I was to use this FK shin to drive it when I got to the same position for my um, with my IK um, this corrective shape wouldn't apply so we need to find a different bone to track and luckily there is uh, one that's going to work really well for us if I select my armature here and it's going to be located on this very last um, bone layer here I'm going to turn this on and this is going to be the ORG shin so the reason this is a better choice is because this bone the ORG shin is actually, if I go to bone constraints, is the one responsible for switching between IK and FK. Let me s switch this over here and uh, change this from IK to FK. And you'll notice that it's following, when it's in this position, it's following the FK um, chain. And when we go to IK, it is following the IK chain. So this is the bone, the IK or org shin dot L is the one we're going to use to drive this shape. All right, so let's add... Let me go back to make sure I'm in FK mode here. Get back to my 90 degrees. Let's add a driver to core knee x90.l. And we'll just hover over the value. Click um, add driver. And we're going to use manually create later um, single. So now we've got a driver. We need to configure it. Now I've already um, set up a driver um, setup here. And I've shown this in another um, tutorial how to set up different. Um, um, views here just so we don't have to keep going back and forth opening and shutting different windows so I have a 3d view over here and I have a graph editor set over here to drivers not F curve so you want to make sure you switch this to drivers and now I can just select this new um, driver that we added over here and make that active and we need to go to um, our drivers tab so by default um, it's going to be set to scripted expression and um, uh, Blender will add two keyframes for us here. So I know th if they're hard for you to see, if they're very small, just do A to select those keyframes and then just type um, period on your uh, keypad and that will zoom in there. So we have one keyframe that's at zero, 0 and one keyframe that's at 1 and 1. All right, so let's first change um, our scripted expression um, to average value. And now we need to set up our variable, and that 
we're going to need to find our armature and then find the bone. And as I mentioned before, it's going to be ORG shin. We're going to use the shin.l to drive that shape key. And we want to change um, the type here to X rotation. And we want to change it from world space to local space. Now, by default, the show debug info should be on. But if it's not, you can check it. Because these are the values we're going to use um, to determine uh, when this turns on and, and off. And uh, you'll notice right now, because I've got the FK um, shin bone rotated 90 degrees. And we're in FK mode. Um, that org shin.l is... F um, showing a debug the debug information at 90 degrees but this other value over here this is 1.571 this is 90 degrees in radians so we need to remember um, what 90 degrees is in radians you don't have to actually worry about what radians are you can just use this debug info here info here so 1.571 now like I mentioned it had these two keyframes I'm going to select the top one and go to F curves and I'm going to type in manually 1.571 into the frame value. So the frame value is going to be equal to our scripted expression or our variables and the value is going to be equal to what we want our um, shape key to be which is 1.0. So now if I go back to drivers just do update dependencies just to make sure everything has been updated here. Let me clear out the rotations of our shin select our mesh and look at the value of our core 90 so when it's unrotated it should be at zero let me just rotate this 45 degrees r x x 45 now the value of our um, corrective shape should be 0.5 so if we select the mesh and look at that that's uh, what it is and our x x let's go all the way to 90 and it should be uh, at 90 degrees or 1.571 radians, it is going to have a value of 1. So that is how I set up um, my uh, drivers. I think it's very easy to do that just by typing in the actual values I want these directly on these keyframes. So let me add a little bit of a curveball here. What if we don't want um, our shape key to start at zero or when it's rotated. Let's say we want it to start our x x when it's rotated at 45 degrees instead. So we can do that by selecting this first keyframe. Let's go back to our drivers and just look at our debug value again. Um, we know that our org shin is 45 degrees because we're using our FK bones to position that, and we can look at the debug info. 45 degrees is 0.785 radians. So let's go to our F curves with this first one selected and change frame to 0 0.785 and we'll go back to drivers just do update and now let's unrotate this get it back to normal and I'm going to do RXX44 so just short of 45 degrees and you'll notice that it's still at zero if I do RXX45 it should start engaging and you'll notice it's starting to engage right there and RXX90 we have a full value of 1. So that is how I would start it at a different position. So, All right, so that's actually was not too hard. And hopefully I did a good job of explaining um, how to set those values up. Um, one more thing here just to make it easy. Let me select my mesh here. And you'll notice that I have a core knee uh, for the right side. So if I turn this on that is going to be a shape key for the right side and I can um, quickly copy this from our left side do copy driver and then select this one and paste this in the value paste it now I just need to do a very small change here because this is um, using org shin .l, I just want to change my right side here to use org shin dot r update and Let's go back to our full default view here. Let me see here. I need to select. Let me turn off my org bones and turn on the right side. All right, R X X, and you should be able to see that shape key is applying on the right side. So basically, one value drivers are actually pretty easy and quick to set up. So that is how I set up my drivers, and that should get you started. Now. 
another thing that came up on the forums uh, recently is um, creating drivers for these upper arms here. So this actually has more to do with um, kind of body mechanics. So I've noticed this on a few different um, people I've posed um, and put pictures on where they pose their arms up like this. Now, this isn't humanly possible in order for you to raise your arm uh, above that T-pose position without involving your shoulder. So if you actually stick your hand out right now and kind of test this, you'll see that I'm not BSing you about uh, body mechanics here. Um, put your arm straight out like a T-pose and try to lift it without lifting your clavicle and involving your shoulder. And you'll find that it's very painful if you try to do that. Um, so in order to make a proper pose, you need to involve the shoulder at least a little bit in there, and it varies a little bit. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So always involve your shoulder after you reach um, that T-pose position. So I hope that makes sense. So like I said, this is not humanly possible. You need to involve your shoulder first, and um, of course your, uh, it's going to look a lot better. So I hope those tips help. And I just want to um, make sure that at least the very bare basics are out there, and I will probably do a more in-depth in, um, tutorial after the holiday season um, and the busyness of that um, gets taken care of. And I can talk about other things and other um, ways we can um, get better deformations with our Rigify rig. So until then, good luck.